thought it'd be a fun idea to go through a recent plot that I uploaded and do a little tactical breakdown. This fight took place at Swordplay 2021. Uh, my opponent was Daniel Green and we're fighting for third place. Now, before we get into it, I know Greeny uh, quite well as a fencer. Um, we'd sparred many times at club level and at competitions. And I have a fair idea of what he's capable of and what his normal go-to tactics are. So, um, so effectively going into this fight, my mentality was to uh, try to exploit his weaknesses um, and capitalize on my advantages. So Daniel Green, uh, at least to me, his weaknesses are um, he is very fast with his hands, but uh, not so much with his feet. He's very mobile, but he tends to fence on the spot. Um, so I thought if I could close, close the gap, get past his lightning strikes, tease those out, I could get in to where my, my comfort zone is, uh, so fighting from, fighting from close range, fighting from the bind, and overwhelm his defences. Now the first exchange of any competition is always um, a bit janky. Um, you don't know what the opponent's going to launch. Um, you don't necessarily know what game plan is going to work. So here I'm, I'm just kind of bouncing in and out just on the edge of the range. Uh, keeping my sword uh, in a relatively um, unthreatening position, again to try to tease out those strikes. So I thought I've, if I could stay just on the edge of distance, I can, um, I can void those strikes with footwork, uh, use the blade if possible, uh, gain the bind, and, and, and work in from there. Okay, at this point I got a little bored and um, thought, look, he's not taking the bait. So I better launch my own uh, Vorschlag, my own initiating attack uh, to try to break his timing a little bit. I didn't want him to get too comfortable in the defense and too set up. So I thought I'd pull the rug out from under him and, um, and bring the fight to him, hoping that he was not ready. Turns out that wasn't the case. He was ready. So uh, that risk didn't pay off. So at this point I'm thinking, look, revert to that core plan of fishing out those attacks because it's obviously what he's, what he's set up to do now. So um, if I can set up some kind of attack, gain the blade, work in, then I can hit him with a combo, which is what I attempt here. Okay, let's look at that again. So I try to fish out, fish out an attack, trying to give him something to, to repose to. Uh, I open up, open up my right shoulder here. He takes the bait. I parry. He tries to repost. I parry that as well. Working in. As you see, I'm, a, I'm approaching him. He's staying still relatively stationary. Wind up. And go to combo off the head. Um, he drops his defense, opens up his head, so I take the target. He gets me on the arms. And then we have to blow each other after that. Now it's worth mentioning, I'm not going to analyze the, the flagging or the judging here, um, just the tactics, so the points are what they, what you see. So in this next exchange, I know I'm down on points and I really want to earn that deep target to bring the, to bring the fight back. I know the combos are working, the last exchange seemed good, uh, but this time I need to push a little bit harder just to make sure that combo, that combo earns me, earns me that deep target. So let's have a look. So to get that deep target, I really want to fish out um, as much blade as possible in an attack. So what you'll see next is, is I guess a little bit of a twirling action. Uh, I want him to feel like the, the immediate threat has been, um, been withdrawn for a second, um, but also keep the blade in motion because uh, I'm confident in my speed to, to be able to bring that blade back on it. So long as I have just an inch of range, I can, I can bring it back on in time and and gain gain hopefully as much blade as possible. Let's see how that plays out. There we go, there's the twirl and there's the capture. So I've come down about halfway up his blade. Um I hoped I could get in a bit deeper. Um but but this will this will do. What you'll see next is a really quick thrust. Uh, this is wasn't necessarily planned but it's just muscle memory from training. Uh, so you'll see a successful thrust land. Um, I'm actually not aware that it that it landed. Um, I don't think Daniel is either necessarily. So I continue the combo, right? I d double tap, make sure 
that um that I get absolute payoff in the end from this. Uh, I like I said, my plan was to to push the combo harder to make sure I absolutely come out of this exchange with a with a deep target. So let's see. There's our thrust, and here comes the combo, pushing hard to get that deep target. Let's rewind a little and go back and see if we can break down that combo a little bit more. Okay, here we are in half time. And we hit play. So there's the capture, the thrust, and the repost. So at this point, uh, I haven't yet landed a strike. So I want to keep him engaged. I want to keep him in my distance. Uh, so I'm just going to basically just bounce from, from quarter to quarter, uh, overwhelm his defenses until I can expose an opening. To land the blow. So at this point, um, Swerkow is my go-to. I know I can Swerk um, for as long as I want potentially, uh, and I'm not quite sure that his defenses can keep up. So um, we're very, very close, as you can see. It looks like our knees are almost touching. So I know he's not backing out. So he's he's got no way out of this. I just need to, I just need to keep striking um, longer than he can keep defending. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's go back a little bit there. So Greeny tries to duck, duck the cut to break the combo and cut the body. But unfortunately I see it and redirect to take the head and I've got my combo. Mission success. Now again, I'm not here to make any judgment on the flags, on the marshal. Dan's an experienced fencer uh, and an experienced marshal, so I trust his judgment. Okay, so leading into this next exchange, um, again, sticking to that same kind of game plan, uh, I'm a bit more confident now that that combo paid off. Um, but as you'll see, um, it looks like Greeny had changed his game plan a little bit. Um, in response to that last exchange. Let's take a look. Seeing Greeny's posture and how aggressively he's stepping in with that blade forward, uh, I know he's he's here to seek a revenge strike. So I'm not I'm not gonna get aggressive. I'm just gonna hang back, keep that blade in frequent motion, um, and and try to capture what's coming in. And what he gave me was a nice uh, direct long point thrust. So if we go back a tad there. See him thrust in. Uh, I was able to capture that blade. Almost the same circumstances as before. Now this is where we need to slow things down just a tad again because right, this happens very quickly. So I try to work in uh, and cut to their head with a short edge. Um, a bit of a schnappen. Um, he brings his blade over. I'm now under his blade, right? At this point, where again, knees to knees situation where I want to be. This is the range, this is my comfort zone. I know I can work from here very efficiently. Uh, and I know Greeny, uh, at least in my experience, can't so well. So at this point, I'm under the blade. I know I need to reverse that. So he's left the left hand side, well, his right of his head open. I go for a quick smirk out of that side. Uh, I can see him coming in with the the shortage of his blade to block that off. Um, again, try to go for the arms <laughs> while he covers off that angle. Um, looked like I got the arm strike. He comes down. Uh, I'm defended here with a hang parry to the left. Um, I see his head open, so I want to get. I want to get above that blade. At this point, I'm under. I just need to reverse that blade over again with another kind of snap in action, and hit the head. Uh, which I've I've done there very very quickly. Uh, all the while I'm stepping back to give myself a bit more cutting range, and as you see, Greeny's pretty stationary. Again, uh, it shows that, um, at least in my opinion, I know what I'm doing in this range, and my opponent is a little bit out of his depth. Um, so again, another successful exchange. I get the head hit. He's he's really given me that combo, um, which is excellent. So let's now look at the next exchange. Let's put this back on normal speed. It's a bit of a long 
long period at the end here. Let's fast forward a little bit. Okay, so now I'm feeling probably a bit too overconfident after two successful head hits uh, against Greeny, a very difficult opponent. Um, so I decide to take a risk now. Really, the fight's balancing on the wire. Um, I can't remember what the scores are, but I think this is potentially um, whoever wins this exchange wins the fight, um, which I really want to do. So let's see what happens. So this last exchange happened in a similar fashion to the first. Uh, I thought I could take a pivot, um, set up an ex especially after the last couple of exchanges where I set up an expectation that I'm going to fish out an attack and capture and close in with the combo. I thought I could um, zig and then zag. Um, so you see me beginning with the same kind of motions. Um, if we go back a little bit here. Coming in, same kind of twirly, waiting to see what you're going to do. Here I realize that he's not backing out. I should have read his posture um, and the threat a bit better. Uh, you can see he's very upright. Um, Blade is very actively pointing, pointing at me, head locked on. He's he's again seeking re seeking a revenge strike. So um, I decide to to take a zag here and throw a one-handed thrust, um, just to give him something that he he didn't expect. At this point, I just need a deep. I don't care if I wear the after blow. Uh, I was sure this was going to pay off. Bang. He dodges. Um, I'm sure that would have hit if he didn't dodge. Um, Throws a midline attack at the hands. Uh, strangely, I think it gets caught in my glove. Um, so I go for the afterblow, but there was a bit of a yanking action which negated my my afterblow timing. Uh, otherwise, I could have taken the the head here. But that's just um that's the way it goes <laughs> in the the throws of combat. So let's see how this finishes. Okay. Finishing with a very heroic pose there at the end. I was ready for that combo, but heard the hold and had to slam on the brakes. Bang. And that was it. Greeny got away with a... I think that was... Anyway, I'm not going to say what that was, but it was what it was. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it was an interesting experience putting it together. Uh, I hope I didn't give away too much of my toolbox. And... Greeny, if you if you watch this, I'll get you next time. See you later.